Thanks, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, okay, last piece of the evening. The big reveal. I hope that you all can join us over at Majolica afterwards. If for no other reason than to say, why did you pick those speakers? That's <laughs> awful, or that's awesome. Here we go. So these are little bits of our teaser posters that were over here hanging on the wall. So pushing the limits of what the mind can do with fine motor skills while entertaining and delighting millions around the world. Anybody have a guess who that could be? You probably won't recognize her name, Amy Walker. This is a picture of Amy. Amy has um, a video on YouTube called 21 Accents that's had over 6 million views. It's one of the most watched videos on YouTube. She's an actress. She has this uncanny ability to do 21, at least, accents very convincingly. Um, she also has recorded an album about accents with Jack White of the White Stripes, um, which was pretty fascinating to listen to. And um, she is most likely going to be our host for TEDx Phoenixville as well, because unfortunately Kelly and Reeves, who hosted last year, um, are not available this year, which is a real disappointment because they did such a fantastic job. But we think Amy is going to do a great job filling in for us, and she's also going to be doing a presentation. All right, documenting people, places, people and places that encapsulate time. This gentleman used celluloid to tell the stories of the giants of the sweet science Britain's best exports, and America's declining royalty. So this is Albert Maisel's 84-year-old Oscar-nominated documentary filmmaker. He um, directed a lot of films, including Gimme Shelter about the Rolling Stones. He did Grey Gardens, which is the reference to, to America's declining royalty, because that was about Little Edie and Big Edie, um, aunt and cousin to Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Um, he also directed When We Were Kings, which was about, um, is that the rumble in the jungle? Boxing. Right? Sweet science. Why is that the sweet science? How it's, I don't get it. <laughs> Hell, somebody will explain you to you point, Majola, but, yeah. what that's all about. Okay. Um, so Albert Mazels is coming. We are so thrilled. He was one of our real reaches when we asked, and he said yes immediately. He might have been one of our first yeses. So we are super excited, especially because of the film connection being a film theater here. We are thrilled to have them come. Okay, imagining telling stories of amazing triumph and examining how the human mind and human spirit is able to not only adapt and survive, but evolve and excel. This is Amy Ellis Nutt. She won the Pulitzer this year for feature writing for um, a series of articles she wrote for the New Jersey Star Ledger about a fishing boat that sunk off the coast of New Jersey in 2009. Um, I think those articles were called The Wreck of the Lady Mary. So if you want to look those up, see what she won the Pulitzer Prize, Prize for, you can do so. But that's not what she's going to be talking about in September. Instead, she's going to be talking about a book that she just published called um, Shadows Bright as Glass. And it's about an artist named John Sarkin, who um, only became an artist after he had a massive stroke and a series of brain surgeries that went kind of awry. And um, the stroke of those surgeries really fundamentally changed who he was as a person. So he, in his former life, he was a chiropractor and a pretty straight, um, straight arrow kind of guy. And then afterwards, he became a compulsive artist. And his work is shown in galleries selling for tens of thousands of dollars now, and it's just an incredible, fascinating story. And so Amy is going to come talk to us about him. What was his name? His name is John Sarkin, J-O-N, John Sarkin. Brainstorming a way to help people in and around the world utilize resources more effectively solving immediate problems and building sustainable futures. This is a guy named Josh McLean. Here he is, he's a young guy. He um, grew up in Villanova, he graduated from Colgate. He now works in Chicago for Price Waterhouse Coopers. But before he started working for them, he took some time off and he did a do-it-yourself foreign aid project in Tanzania that was really um, incredible and our committee found his story really inspiring. And so he's gonna come talk to us about that project that he did in Tanzania. 
thinking about establishing educational excellence by founding and managing collaborative school communities that eliminate the achievement gap for all children. This um, speaker really ties into Simon uh, Hauger's talk from earlier tonight. And in fact, these two were put in touch with one another by uh, Todd Palmer on our committee. And now they are doing some work together, which is really exciting. So this is a woman named Stacy Cruz. She is the CEO of, um, it's just American Paradigm Schools, which is a collective of charter schools in Philadelphia. <coughs> one of the schools that she founded um, was called the First uh, Philadelphia Charter School. But now she's running a series of schools and she is gonna talk to us about progressive education. Beating out powerful Eastern rhythms that define heartbeats, breaths of brain waves, this group will kick TEDx Phoenixville off with a percussive pow. This is a Japanese taiko drumming group called Kaio Daiko. And they are going to be opening the event for us. Make sure everybody is awake at 10 a.m. We all should be by then. Orally interesting and sonically unique, this group creates indie chamber music, presenting the familiar to your ears in ways you have never before imagined. This is a group called the Witchin Initiative. And I almost, I'm not sure if I should say what instruments they play, because it's really quite um, extraordinary. So suffice it to say, their instruments and the music they play wouldn't ordinarily go together, but they do it and they make it work and it's fascinating. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you what they play. You can look them up online if you are so inclined. Um, there's a couple more speakers I want to tell you about that are um, not last minute additions, but um, we just got final answers not in time to put their slides up. Um, so one of them is actually, it's going to be two people, two grad students from the University of Pennsylvania who are part of a team called Team Darwin. And Team Darwin just won the 2011 Robo Cup, um, which is a competition for robots. So they have designed this robot called Darwin who looks like a little person. And Robo Cup is a soccer competition. Um, and so it's these robots playing soccer, which sounds really dry and boring, but I tell you, I have watched the video of their winning match several times, and I am completely enthralled each time I watch it. So these two students are gonna come and tell us about the work that they're doing in their robotics lab. Their um, professor, Dennis Hong, has already done two big TED Talks, and he is actually doing another TED Talk this February. Um, so these guys are the real deal. They're doing really extraordinary, um, cool work, and we're thrilled that they're gonna be able to come present Darwin to us. And then the last person I want to tell you about is um, Derek Pitts. Does anybody know who Derek Pitts is? He's the astronomer at the Franklin Institute. And um, so he is going to come, hopefully, he's not a 100%, but 99.9% um, a yes. I'm going to talk with him next week, and hopefully we are going to find a way to make sure he can get here. And um, we might have a few other additions beyond this lineup. We'll certainly be adding in some videos. We're actually required to show a few videos mixed in with our live speakers, so those will be um, surprises to all of you, since we haven't chosen them yet. Um, so that's it. So that's the lineup for September 24th. I hope you can make it. I hope you can join us over at Majolica um, for some savory foods and Sly Fox beers. Thank you all so much for coming.